was so happy to see you uh, that day. We were in a grocery store, and I'm like, is that Erica? <laughs> And that was Erica. We haven't seen each other in quite some time. What you been up yeah. to? Man, working and and trying to keep my sanity with all of these kids that I got running around. That mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, maintaining, you know, life and trying to just fill it out. Right. I've been I have been low key lately. Um, not necessarily out as much as I used to be, but it's the time to just go into the kids mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and, and building a business. So right. two sets of twins. What is that like? Like I said before, crazy, chaotic, joyful. Um, they, they, they fuel me up. They keep me energized and then they wear me down too. So <laughs> um, I definitely need to drink my water and try to get as much rest because um, I need it. But yeah, they're how far they're eight? uh eight and yeah. two. Okay, eight and two. Okay. What were you so, asking me? I I talked over you. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I was asking you, what's the age gap? Oh yeah, eight and two. So the eight year olds, man, I, I'm I mean, I'm so proud of them. They are just wonderful joys to have. Um, super excited about school, about sports. Um, they, I, I, it's so funny cause I just, I see bits and pieces of my, me and my husband mm -hmm. and both of them. And it's like, okay, well, we make a good team when it comes to these children. We, you know, doing what we need to do both, you know, just trying to do our best, but they, at the top of their class, they're good friends, just good people that caring. Um, and that's, that's, you know, to me, what it's all about is like, okay, mm -hmm. am I raising people that are going to be good for our community that are going right. to you know, be able to build for our futures that I'm going to be okay, you know, leaving the world into their hands. That's what my, my focus is. Yeah, that's good. That's good that you feel okay with what you see. Like, you know what? I'm actually okay. My husband is actually okay. <laughs> you know, what, yeah. are, what are some of those good qualities that you see in your children that they model or that they have that you and your husband have? Yeah. So we, um, we've been working on with them discipline, right. Being able to just, um, from a, from a sport side, um, just set a goal and put the work in to make sure that they achieve what, you know, what they should or what they want to do. So if they said, you know what, I want to make sure that I do a hundred pushups a day. Like they're doing it and they're saying, dad, did you do your pushups? Or mom, do you want to have a challenge? And I'm like, oh, you know, I can do 10. <laughs> so we're going to uh, challenge out on that. But um, school, you know, they, there's a, um, a healthy competition between the two of them. They're in the same class and they enjoy, you know, making sure that they fit whoever finishes the work um faster or who can get you know a higher score on their on their test and mm -hmm. I was worried about that at first like uh, I don't know if I want them to be you know comparing themselves but yeah. I think that a little level of of competition is healthy for them mm -hmm. and they're still each other's biggest fans so yeah. when, what we teach in our house is like hey we all winning you know if if one is doing well that doesn't take away from your life, but we're going to, you know, celebrate and they get that. And so when one of them may have, like my son, he, he, he was in gymnastics and he had a championship and, you know, it's just like, she's his biggest fan and she's pushing him and challenging him. Okay. And, you know, and he does the same for her. So I really enjoy that for the two of them. Yeah, so you see that teamwork like how you and your husband have. You see that in your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it ain't easy because me and him. I mean, there's there's things where we be like, um, wait a minute, I, I don't I don't necessarily agree with with that approach to things. And me and him, mm -hmm. we could we collide on some things, but um, at the, at the end of the day, there'll be like just little moments where you know where it's like you know we don't have a blueprint to this. We ain't, you know we. We still trying to figure it out every day, mm -hmm. but it's working. They, they're they're good. They're learning. 
they still taking away the things that we say and that just makes us proud. Yeah, yeah. What do you think are some like other qualities that um, children should possess that will help them to be great humans? Um, yeah, the the one thing that that um I do appreciate about my children and I'm and I will try to push it even more is just being in the spirit of gratitude mm -hmm. um, and helping them to understand and to be thankful about the things that they have and know that, you know, it, it doesn't come easy and thankful for what, you know, people do the time that they spend um, to, you know, make them better, whether it's teachers or, you know, just friends and family, you know, just whenever they have something. So I definitely think all children and all people should have a spirit of gratitude. Um, I personally feel like you will lack happiness. There is a oh. lot, there's happiness does not come without gratitude. Yeah. And being thankful for something and being appreciative of if it's just where you are in life, something that maybe has happened to you where you, you know, got through whatever the case may be. I don't think happiness comes without gratitude. And so that is one of the, the things that I'm always trying to press in, into into them. Like, hey, you know, make mm -hmm. sure what are you thankful for today? Like, is there things that happen in your day that we can reflect on and appreciate? So that they, you know, are always just knowing this is not to take advantage of things. And yeah. where you are is, you know, um, is be thankful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love to like, you know, as they say, be a fly on the wall in your home <laughs> just to see how things go, you know, with the kids and everything. Because two sets. Wow. Oh, yeah. Them little ones. Them little ones now is a different story. Mm -hmm. they keep me going so the little ones so the oldest one's boy and a girl and then my little two are two girls and right now it is like I'm trying to potty train one the other one is trying to mother her I had to tell her yesterday you not her mama mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm her mama you know you don't have yeah. to worry about this stuff I'm gonna get it for her. I'm gonna do this I'm like no just settle down and so they're running around there and um, it's it's just it's fun to watch. One of the biggest things that I try to keep in mind is because mm -hmm. with twins, it's so easy to compare, right? Yeah. You one twin to the other twin, or you comparing, you know, the little twins with the big twins, and you then you comparing them to everybody mm -hmm. else's kids. So like the comparisons is so easy to happen. And I'm always just trying to remind myself, like, okay, you're comparing. They're all different people that yeah. all need different pieces of you at different points. And that can be hard. So that can be um, like daunting, trying to yeah. figure out, like, okay, they this this style of, you know, whatever I'm trying to do, this don't work with her. Like, mm -hmm. it works with the other three. And I need to, you know, switch it up and... um and that that just takes work to figure it out, right? Trial mm -hmm. and error of, you know, how does each of them learn? But that was really bad in the beginning. And and it um and I just started to read. I started to read a lot to say, you know okay. what? It's so easy again to just compare them. Everybody's gonna do things at their at their own time frames and yeah. just gotta let them flow and let mm -hmm. them, you know, just be kids. Mm hmm. Just having that awareness to say, you know what, Let I need to approach this differently for all oh, of yeah. them. Wow. Well, you're such an amazing human being. So I know that your children are going to be a beautiful, you know, replication of you because you are awesome. You know, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That means so much to me. Thank you. It, you are. You are just a ball of energy. Um, You're you're not only just a great parent, but you're also an awesome uh, professional. Like, you know, you do amazing things to help people uh, to build their families, you know, yeah. financially and things like that. So I, I want you to take me back to when you were younger, when you were the young Erica. Like, you didn't have your husband, your twins. You didn't even, you know, know that it was going to be like this. 
I'm pretty sure you pray, you know, for some of these things that you have now. Um, but what were you thinking? Did you think that you wanted to have a life like this and you wanted to help and empower people and families? You know what? I didn't, I never imagined myself doing what I'm doing today and running a business. Um, and I remember, I remember actually being in college and saying, you know, okay, well, my goal is, you know, I want to, I do, I want to run somebody's company. I want to work my way up. I know I wanted to be, you know, a, a businesswoman in some mm -hmm. shape, form or fashion. I didn't know what that looked like. And I just remember thinking like, I don't want to, I don't want to have my own. That's just too much. It's really hard getting somebody else, like getting people to, to care about your business. Like you care about it. I don't want that much responsibility. Mm -hmm. I just want to go in, work, do a really good job and then, you know, go home. And um, it's just crazy. Cause after that first set of twins, you know, I just, I was, um, I said to myself, you know what, if I'm going to do this and I, and I do work hard, I might as well try it for myself. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, when you just, you hear the water cooler talk and you hear, you know, people that um, have been around less, um, less time than you, people who you bringing in, you train in and they make more money than you. And it's just like, you know what, I'm tired of the, the office politics and mm -hmm. I rather, try to go out and build something. Um, but never, when I was younger, never in life did I think that I would be running my own company and, um, you know, trying to, to build something that is going to, you know, last for my family and something that I hopefully am able to pass down. Um, but it's, it brings me to the thought of what I tell my clients all the time is you never really can, you never know how much you're changing, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're not even probably the same people as we were even one year ago. There's different things that happen to us, experiences that we have that formulate our thinking and challenge us. And as we continue to grow, as we get older, it's going to evolve. Right. Yeah. And so I just thank God for, you know, the growth and thank God for the ability to, um, the, the faith to just step out and say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with these two kids at home and go into a, um, uh, a space of eat what you kill. I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of fear to, you know, get to this place, but, um, I'm happy that I'm here. That transformation that it's it's brought up on me has made me view life in different ways. Um, okay. Meet bunches of different people, right? I don't know yeah. that you and I would have cross paths had right. I been doing yeah. this work. And so I'm just I'm appreciative of you know my journey and just where I've been. Yeah, I'm so happy you stepped out as a mother um, and as a wife and of twins, like. What gave you the courage to say, even in that moment, because like you said, you had your twins and you decided to still have the courage to pursue a dream for yourself? I always have have bet on myself. So like I've always just felt like, you know, if there's a challenge, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do um, the best that I can. But I prayed on it and and. um what I told myself is, you know what, Erica, you 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 do a good job. You do great work. There's going to be somebody that's going to want you on their team. And and I've always been in sports and everything as a kid. And so one of my one of my um, my sayings to myself that I always say is, Erica, you want to you want to be an asset on any team that you want. Right. Whether it is, you know, a work team, whether it's your family, you just want to walk away and make sure that you are asset to whatever relationships that you're building. And so I've always felt that way. Like I'm going to put in work. So if I did go and I fall on my face and I'm, I'm going to learn something from the experience. Yeah. And then I can always go back. I can always go back and they're going to continue paying me pennies on the dollar from right. what I was yeah. making them. Right. Yeah. They're going to be happy to have me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how I've always felt what about myself. Did you like, play? 
basketball. Okay, really? <laughs> yeah, so I was a, listen, you look at me, you see me now in these pearls. It wasn't that. I was tomboy growing up, um, author, really? even, even in college. And today, like on my regular days, I like to just throw on, you know, my sweatpants and my dookies and just Role. Okay. <laughs> but, I didn't um, know that about you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I've been in basketball. And that's we got a basketball family. Nice. Basketball is, is and has always been my favorite sport. But I'll be honest, I'm I'm behind in what's going on. Like oh, okay. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> in the like who was it in, in the 2000s. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it's, it has shifted. I was watching, you know, I'm watching now with the playoffs and everything. I'm like, I was telling my husband, like, man, I don't hardly know any of these people now. I need to, you know, catch back yeah. up myself. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I, I love yeah. it, you know. I um I believe like one of the the players, Anthony Edwards, he's one of the guys now. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I, I I recently learned about him through my brother, but yeah, I was I was a tomboy myself. And you know what? I stopped playing basketball and I'm not going to say like I was heavily into it, but mm -hmm. I have found out that the girls didn't make as much as the guys. The women no. didn't make as much. So when I not found that, great. I think freshman year in high school, I was just like, oh, I'm good. Yep. And yeah. that's kind of how it was in college where, you know, OK, I could have went. I could have went to like a, a D2 or D3. I wasn't like super great, but I was good enough to play. And um, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go with the academics and decided to just go ahead and go to Marquette. But um, yeah, I, it, it's crazy how significantly, I think at that time, it was like, the women were making like 50,000 compared mm. to, you know, the millions or I think at that time, the, the lowest NBA salary was like 200 and some thousand, I think. But yeah, I was like, yeah this is I can. And Again. it's interesting because I recently read um, that they that they're still fighting for that. You know, like the oh, girls yeah. that just entered the league this year. It's like they still it doesn't compare to the guys. It just doesn't compare. No, not at all. Um, I do think that it's nice, though, what, you know, the the young ladies now are bringing, you know, just more attention to mm -hmm. the WNBA and I hate that it kind of has to come through the the bickering of things and the back and mm -hmm. forth and all of the the race stuff but it is what it is and I think it's good for the publicity for the WNBA I'm hoping that you know that gets viewers and um, ultimately gets them all more money right yeah yeah now how did you get into the lane of finance um, so I started out in college just in banking and I was a teller. And then um, when I graduated, I went over into insurance for a short stint. And I was I was going to um, I was working for an agency and I was going to be a part of like the agency training. So ultimately thinking about having my own agency and that piece of it didn't work out, but I still always, you know, had a good um, or enjoyed the the finance piece of things. And so I went back into it and started to, but I didn't want to be on the retail side. So I went directly into investments. And so um, when I did that, when I started at, um, I did a stint at Wells Fargo Asset Management. Okay. I got my series seven. I got my series 63 and I became a manager. So I had a 24 and um, I was the only one, you know, that looked like me when I was doing it at that time. And that helped me see like, okay, this is different, right? This is something that we all normally, when we think about us even in the banking world we're we're thinking about us being again like tellers or yeah or mortgage brokers maybe personal bankers inside of the branches but never on the investment side of it and so once I realized like there was a lot of people that were failing those tests where they couldn't pass to get to seven in the sixth year I'm like okay well I'm good at this like I can do it 
let's kind of see where this goes, see where it takes me. And I've been rocking and rolling ever since. Okay. And how did you meet your part, your business partner? Oh, JB, we met at Marquette. So he okay. and I have been friends for a long time. He actually started here at Northwestern Mutual and I um I went to Wells Fargo Asset Management. So he started more so on the insurance and I was on the investment side. And we when I when I was on maternity leave and I started to think about, you know, okay, I think I'm ready to kind of step out, I reached out to him. And he's like, you know what, if you're going to do this, you got to come here. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, let's at least be in the same space so that I can give you pointers or, you know, to help. I can show you how to build your business. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, say less. I'm there. You know, um, he's definitely just an awesome person. Easy. You he know, is. I, yeah. Trust him. You know, just I trust him with my life, with my kids, just everything. He's, mm -hmm. he's phenomenal. Yeah. And a person. I did. He was a big part of, you know, making that decision to to walk away from, you know, the the structure of um, having a salary to eat what you kill. Because it's like, OK, he's an inspiration and I trust him to lead me on the right path. I, you know, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So then in, I, we were running our businesses separately for two years. And then in 2019, we were like, OK we can do bigger and better by being more efficient if we come together mm -hmm. and you work on the insurance side because that's what you know and then I work on the investment side because that's what my background has been in and that's been working great for us. Yeah, yeah. I love what you guys are doing to empower communities and, and families. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing because both of you guys are great individuals, you know, who just have a great heart to yeah. serve people yeah we talked about so much um that you have going on um like what what is something that you feel that matters to you like if you think about your life and all that you have done like what is something that we can take away that matters to you that you feel that it's important for people to know about um if it's a cause or something that people should take a stand on what are your thoughts um so yeah, I think one one thing um is I mean, I guess because I I mean this is this is my life day in and day out is just the um the the financial planning and just how important it is to to do things as a team. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not even saying, okay, hey, you need to go out and find an advisor, but maybe someone that is around in your life to hold you accountable to um, help you, you know, just achieve goals together. It is um, the finances are one of those things where, especially in our community, it's just so taboo to talk about. Um, there's a lot of sometimes for people, there's a lot of shame that comes into play, yeah. a lot of embarrassment. A lot of the times, you know, people will say, well, I'll, I'm not I'm not ready to meet with you. And it's like, okay, that's probably what, when you should be meeting with me so that at least we can get you on the right path. Um, so that way you can, you know, get to where that, where you want to be, or, you know, I'm not where I should be at. And it's like compared to who, right. There's um, so many things out there that can derail you financially and the finances are a big part of, just how you build and how you feel as a person too, right? Mm -hmm. I know money isn't everything and money isn't going to, you know, bring you happiness, um, but it does give you options. Right, yeah. It <laughs> does. So it's nice to have, you know, some options to, you know, make decisions and you're, you're not always having to take what's given to you um, or, um take less than what you feel like you deserve. And that just comes with planning, have, comes with having people in your corner to root you on, having people in your corner that know um, and have, you know, the expertise. Because a lot of us can go out and I'm, I don't feel like I'm tremendously more smarter than, than, you know, anybody else. If you take the time to read and, you know, get the right materials and learn a lot of this stuff, you can do it. 
the what what I think I bring or we is that we have taken the time to actually do it. We do this on the day to day. And so when you're busy in your life being great, doing the things that you need to do and being with your family, you don't want to take out the time to look at this stuff and you and you probably don't like it. So it's a little bit harder for you to learn it than somebody that's like, oh, I'm, I love reading about this every day. Yeah, right? yeah. And so get your experts in your corner um, so that way you can just get good advice to move forward. I always, I just don't think that people should go at really anything alone. Yeah, for sure. Not doing life alone. We're talking about yeah. teams. Like, what do you feel are some good, uh, you know, good qualities to have on a team? Like, you know, help us to build a team. So if we were to build a team for our 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 personal life, for our relationship, our marriage, you know, um, how do we manage uh, motherhood, friendships? Like, what are what do we need to do as, as far as building that team? Yep. So, huh, there's, I guess, in my opinion, um, there's a couple of different uh, players that need to be had. So I, I guess I'm looking at, so from my business hat and I'm looking at your financial team, right? I think mm-hmm. you should have an advisor, you should have an accountant, you should have a um, estate planning attorney, um, and then you're a, a person to provide some insurance for you and a banker. From a um, a relationship standpoint, I think everyone should should have some counsel, right? Um, whether that is a uh, a regular, you know, relationship therapist, whether that is, if that is your pastor, if there are um, other couples in your life that you look to that are older than you, I, I do, th- there's one thing of keeping your relationship and everything to yourself. Um, I'm, I'm opting on the other side of that. I feel like people should have discernment mm-hmm. and there should be people that you can go to and you can talk to um, about the things that you're going through and you don't have to suffer through it alone. I, I've had conversations with even like my mom or older women in my life, my mother-in-law, and I'm thinking, and they just telling me about things and ex- experiences that they've had back in the day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine going through everything yeah. that you went through alone. Like, yeah. You didn't you didn't tell your sisters about this? You didn't tell like, wait, what? Right. And yeah. I I just I'm a, I am not that. I am not yeah. that whole keep the relationship, but I am, hey, whoever you tell it to needs to be people that, you know, are sound, people that are super trustworthy and and are, you know, non-judgmental because I may say, you know what? There's been times where I've been like, you know, I'm I'm on the bricks. I'm 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 I don't know. I'm looking at do I need to start developing a, a exit plan here? And then a week later, I'm like, oh, I'm just so in love, you know. And so I don't need if I'm, if I'm expressing that to somebody relationships. <laughs> if I'm expressing that, I don't need y'all looking at him crazy when he comes to the cookout and when mm-hmm. he has the family functions. I need this to just keep rolling like right. regular. Just let's, let's keep rolling like nothing happened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, um, but we do, we need, we need outlets and people that's going to check us. Um, and so again, whether that's professional help or that is, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, um, and then you also need your village. And that is, you know, the people who are going to help you raise your children. And the reason why I say help you raise your children is because as parents, I really don't feel like like we can teach them everything on our own and they need to hear some stuff from other people. Mm-hmm. So there may be times where I may call on my friend and, and I'm like, you know, hey, she, you know, my daughter, for example, I'm like, okay, she got her hair done. She needed to hear that she looking good. So, okay, we're going to call up a couple people and they need to hear it so they can, you know, she they can pour into her 
along yeah. with me yeah. that she is beautiful and you know and my son like we got a a lot of men in his life that are pouring into him to say hey you know do things this way or you're you know you're good man way to be confident way to be this and that because they just can't hear everything from us and as they get older they're not going to want to listen to just us they need to hear it from other people and so to me I I really think the village is super important for that and just because you need help trying to like hey I yeah. need y'all to to tap in and get yeah. these kids right <laughs> you know yeah so you need that help you need that help that, that's good that's a good you you packaged it so well it's it's good and it's definitely helpful we all need a village uh whether you have children or not just as an individual we all need help uh for everything that we're doing in life you know to navigate this journey you know, God did not call us to walk alone by ourselves. Um, so this was really, really good, Erica. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, do you have anything else that you want to share with us as far as how we can build a great team for life? Um, and I would just say, you know, be intentional about it. Like if you feel like you're missing any of the um the pieces. Be intentional. Oh, I would add to that too. Um, your your mentors and your sponsors. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you always need people in your life that you know I feel like are going to push you to be a better you. Whether that's spiritual, whether that's professional, you want you want to be building advocates, and that comes with you know intentionality. Where do I want to be? You know, who is some people that I trust that can you know get me there and and direct me on the right path? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for coming on Have Conversations That Matter. I enjoy uh, catching up with you. I look forward to all the things that you have coming up to continue to empower us um, in the financial space, space particularly, but just doing all that you're doing. Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs>